Welcome back, Confirmands, to our look at Scripture all the way from Genesis to Revelation. As always, have your Bible and your catechism ready to look up any passages or questions and answers that we'll look at, and have a pen or pencil and some paper nearby to write down any questions or notes for class on Sunday. So with that, let's begin, as we always do in each video, as we remember that we are baptized and beloved children of God, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In our previous video, we saw what happened to the kingdom of Israel after it reached the heights of its power and influence with Saul and David and Solomon. They started to follow the gods of the nations around them, and thereby breaking their covenant, their part of their promise, their agreement with God. However, because of God's great love for his people, he sent them prophets, or messengers, to tell them what was going on and to warn them of the consequences of what would happen if they continued to follow false gods. And so let's see how this episode of uh, these this two kingdoms and the prophets kind of point ahead to Jesus and our Christian life. What started the decline of the Israelite kingdom was Solomon's trust not in God, but in his money and his army and the gods that his wives introduced him to. And while we may want to shake our heads at Solomon and say, oh, Solomon, how could you let that happen to you? We're no different. Let's turn in our catechism to question number 31 and see what are some of the things that we often follow and look to first and foremost for our well-being rather than God. So question 31 has five different things that we follow first and foremost, oftentimes rather than God. First of all, our own achievements, human achievements such as intellect, technology, or medical advances. Second, our own goodness or our religious devotion, or another word for that is piety. Our third one is money and possessions. Fourth, pleasure such as food, drink, sex, sports, or other entertainment. And finally, we often uh, look to our family and friends first and foremost rather than God. And so if we look at the very next question, question 32, it asks us what happens when we trust in these things rather than our creator? We confuse God with God the creator with his creation and we thus break all the other commandments as well. Like the Israelites, we too have broken our relationship with God and deserve the consequences of our failures. And so God's actually raised up another prophet to tell his people, to tell the Israelites what was going on and what would happen if they didn't change. And that prophet's name was John. I bet you thought I was going to say Jesus, but no, this is actually John the Baptist. And John actually had a number of things in common with Elijah. First of all, John wore a garment of camel's hair, just like Elijah did, and he ate locusts out in the wilderness. Like Elijah, John told the people to repent of their sins. Also like Elijah, John was persecuted and actually even killed for his message. He was beheaded by King Herod. And finally, as Elijah's message prepared the way for John the Baptist to arrive at the scene, John's message prepared the way for Jesus to arrive at the scene. And as you probably well know, you know, Jesus is our ultimate prophet. And if you look at question 183 in our catechism, our catechism tells us that as our prophet, Jesus proclaims the word of God to us. And so let's take a quick look at some of those things that Jesus proclaims to us as our prophet and as we read it in the Gospels and in the New Testament. First of all, he tells us how we should live. We should love God and love others. You see, can see that in Matthew chapter 22. He tells us how we all fail to do so. We do not, we are not perfect as our Heavenly Father is perfect, as Matthew records in his Gospel. He warns us of the consequences of not following him. He tells us also that even when we don't follow his ways, if we repent, 
we are forgiven when we fail. And finally, he tells us of the abundant life that we have when we follow him. And after Jesus died, much like God's other prophets, because those in authority did not like their message, remember, they tried to, if not actually succeeded in killing the prophets, they killed Jesus as well. After he died and rose again and ascended into heaven, he does not leave us alone without a leader or messenger to share his message. If you look at question 343 in our catechism under the section, The Office of the Keys, Christ instituted the office of pastor to give to us his word and his sacraments. So who are our prophets now? Our pastors are God's messengers, his prophets that like him and in his stead tell us how we should live, warn us of the consequences when we don't. He tells us that we are forgiven, and he tells us how Christ is the one who gives us abundant life. And so, with that comforting message that the pastors give us all the time, let's close with a blessing. May the Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless us now and forever. Amen. All right, thank you for having me, and we'll see you around for future videos. Thank you.